concern. What the hell is Brendan Shanahan going to do? And there's my concern. Brendan Shanahan is the president of hockey operations who Brad Trivling will, Trey Living will report to. Brad Treliving has been a general manager in this league for nearly a decade on his own who reported directly to the ownership group with nobody in between. I'm not quite sure what Brendan Shanahan's role is going to be in the Brad Treliving era in Toronto. I'm not sure the need or the necessity of a president of hockey operations. I understand it with Dubas. He's a first-time general manager. He's learning the ropes, and it's Toronto. I get it. I don't understand the role of president of hockey operations. And I can say that league wide. I don't get it. Like if I could go in today and you guys pay me more and make me president of uh PHNX Coyotes podcast, and I'm the president, you pay me more than the guy underneath me, which would be you and Craig pay me more. And if anything goes wrong, it's your fault. Not my fault. I'm not the GM. You're the GM. It's your fault. Not me. I'm the president. It's not my, so I have no responsibility, but when things go well, I'm the first guy at the microphone. I'm the first guy saying it's me. I don't understand the role. I don't get it. I, I look at there's 10 of those jobs in the National Hockey League that get paid more. And they're mostly, except for two, are former players that are sitting in that role as figureheads and advisors. Best job in hockey by far. I don't know what Brendan Shanahan does. That's Brad Treliving's role. And he should be able to report directly to the board so I don't want to skip quite ahead to, to Dubis, but I just thought it was interesting that Kyle Dubis's title is president of hockey operations. And I watched part of the press conference this morning while I was getting ready to leave the house to come here. And it just felt like, why isn't he just the GM? Right. Why isn't he? Why isn't he just I don't, the GM? I don't understand. So what's the I, thing? I don't understand. It's a bullshit title. It, so what's the thing? Are you the GM or not the GM? Are you the guy making the decisions or are you not making the decisions? Why I, can't you be GM and president? And there are, there, there, there's at least one. Lou Lamarillo mm-hmm. is that. Mm-hmm. Um, David Poyle was kind of that, but now it's Barry Trotz and David Poyle. Um, so David Poyle, and I think David Poyle is just phasing himself out. So I don't think and he's- And Barry a, Trotz has never been a GM. So it's, Right, so it's a little yeah. different. And I understand that. But there are so many, Joe Sackick. Joe Sackick's not the general manager of the Colorado Avalanche anymore. He is the president of hockey operations. Cam Neely, president of hockey operations for Boston. What the hell do they need him for? Either you're the general manager and you make the hockey decisions, or you're not the general manager making hockey decisions. And there are places, and Vegas is a great example. Vegas, George McPhee is the general manager at the time. He isn't now. He was the general manager, and Kelly McCrimmon was assistant general manager. And the thought was that Kelly McCrimmon is going to leave to become a general manager somewhere else and we don't want him to leave. So I tell you what, we'll both do our same jobs. I'll be the GM, George McPhee, but I will now be president of hockey operations and you, Kelly McCrimmon, will still do the same job functions you do now, but we'll just call you the general manager, but you still report to me. And now you don't have to leave. Huh? Like, I just don't get it. Wait, when are the owners going to go, wait a minute, I'm paying both of you to do one job? I don't know. Either you're an assistant GM and a GM, or I don't understand why you need the president. Do I don't think, get it. Do you think don't get it. in a place like Pittsburgh, for example, where the ownership is Fenway Sports Group, so it's more of like that corporate corporation thing rather than a single owner, like let's just say Alex Morello, who's a person who can have relationships, but Fenway Sports Group is it's a group, it's more corporate hat. Do you think that maybe the reason to have a president of hockey operations there is to have that middle man and have the GM be able to focus more on the on ice, the hockey, and then the the president is more the middleman between the owner and the hockey. In, in that reality, like that, makes in reality yeah. that makes sense. In reality, that makes sense, but that's not how these hierarchies actually perform. Yeah. Because the when you go to a person like Brendan Shanahan, he makes the final decision on hockey. And so then what is Brad Treliving's final decision on hockey? I, I, I don't understand. And that, that's going to be an interesting dynamic moving forward because Brad for so long has been the final deci- yeah. decision maker. And you look at a team like the New York Rangers and they have Chris Drury. They don't have a president of hockey operations that deals with the Dolan family and, and everything that goes on with the New York Rangers. And that's a humongous organization yeah. with all kinds of business tentacles there. But they only have a general manager. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who has won the cup, they have a general manager. They don't have a president of hockey operations. It's an unusual job. And it, it, to me, it's it's you're an owner paying three to five million dollars because, yes, that's what the president's. Makes three to what five million dollars a year to be an advisor 
You're not doing the day to day. When is the bus? When is the plane? You're an advisor that they go. Eh, I don't know if I like that trade. Do you I'll th- be golfing. Do you think in the situations of of specifically Boston and Colorado, because of the two you mentioned, like they're former players that are the presidents. Do you think there's like outside of because even if they are kind of like uh, meaningless positions, like there's value in having those guys in the organization more as just being like, sure. hey, we're, we're still paying you and respecting you and yes. keeping you a part of this organization. 100%. But obviously that doesn't apply. In that's the Cam Pittsburgh Neely. Situation. That's Joe Sackick. Yeah. You look at Martin Brodeur, his Not executive VP. This, um, Keith Jones. Keith Jones just gets hired as yeah. president of hockey operations in Philadelphia with how much management experience? He's been on the TV for He's like been on TV. <laughs> he sounds really good and you do a great interview. Keith, why don't you run the organization? What the hell is that? <laughs> If I'm Danny Briere, this worked my way up to be an assistant GM in the in the minors. Go to the be this the 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 general manager of your AHL club. You've moved your way up, and now you're the GM. But now you report to a guy that's been on TV. Keith Jones is a wonderful human being. He's a very very nice man. I've heard nothing but great things about Keith Jones, but he's never done a job in management, and now he's in charge. Like I, I that this is my problem with that job, and I I'm telling you what. There is not much distinction between the two jobs that can be handled by one. I don't care how big the organization is. It's just another layer. It's a way to lay blame and spread blame around. And I tell you what, if things go bad in Toronto, you know, Brendan Shanahan's not going to blame Brendan Shanahan because you didn't hear Brendan Shanahan's name coming up right now. Yeah. You heard Kyle Dubas and Keefe. Mm -hmm. That's who you heard. So this is my long way around to go. Brad Treliving can be the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs, but he should be able to report to the board of Maple Leaf um, MLSE. Yeah. He should be able to 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 report directly to the board because guess what? He's experienced enough. He's smart enough. He's good enough. Yeah. He's talented enough to do this on his own. And I'm not sure why you pay three to five million dollars for an advisor because he was a great player at one time. We'll see.